So well, good afternoon, everybody. This is Mitch Evans, Regional Safety Manager. Some of you might know me, others of you don't. Um, been with Ruan now for seven months and took a uh, special interest in, in a lot of our flatbed activities. And several months back, I got with uh, Darren, the office manager for uh, Marmon Keystar and a few other of our accounts. And we started kind of brainstorming some ways that we could impact our flatbed activities at Ruan. And one of the things that came up along the way was the need to create some consistency. And uh, after several months and a lot of impact from quite a few people, we have come up with what we're kind of affectionately calling the Ruan way to flatbed. And along the way, we, we certainly had a lot of help from a lot of people. Uh, three vice presidents, Lisa, Chad, and Lance, have had their hands in this project. Uh, two safety managers, myself and Allison. Uh, four ops managers, uh, Darren, Terry, Todd, and Andrew. A terminal manager, Brad. Our DSI team, Rick, Kevin, and Doug. And a driver who turned into a trans soup, Tracy. And then certainly uh, our metals lab. And I'll let Darren go ahead and speak to that. So Mitch talked a little bit about consistency, and, and uh, most of the people on the call are probably familiar with the Metals Lab, but for anybody that's not, essentially it's a, an advisory board to the operations management group and, and to Chad RVP uh, on anything that's happening in the metals uh, terminal world. So there is a representative from each of our major metals customers that's nominated you know, by their TM and selected by their ops manager then to, to represent their peers. Um, and it, uh, we probably spend uh, two-thirds of our time on safety-related items, but it's not a safe, just a safety committee. We talk about driver engagement and really anything that's going to impact the drivers. So when we first started the lab last fall, we spent our first meeting uh, doing a decent amount of brainstorming and say, oh, no, okay, so this is a new group, guys. What do we need to talk about? What are our greatest opportunities in a metals group? And unanimously um, with our group of drivers, which we all know how rare that is, unanimously with our group of drivers, uh, it was safety uh, onboarding. It was for specifically when it comes to flatbed stuff, when it comes to securement, when it comes to how to do our non-driving work safely on the flatbed as far as consistency. Uh, it was developed as a um, or identified as an opportunity and one of our weaknesses. So. Uh, that's kind of what one of the things that got this ball rolling and then at the same time Mitch was kind of looking at the same thing and <clears throat> Mitch and I ended up getting together and, and like Mitch said getting a, everybody together and then uh, we actually sent this kind of final product to the back to the lab kind of sent it back to its roots and uh, the lab reviewed it and, and the current members uh, gave us some additional feedback some additional tweaks uh, so it's just really cool to me to see so many people involved and in, in a number uh, 14 or 15 of our um, better drivers as well in the company uh, have an impact to this material that's now going to affect all their peers. So, And yeah, to, to Darren's point, it certainly was a very eclectic group from drivers all the way up to our VPs. And, and our, our biggest mission was obviously to impact safety, but it also is product integri integrity and and safety to the motoring public because as it stands right now, about every two and a half days, we have a load shift at Ruan. Some are considered minor, where they're just landing back on the trailer or striking a bulkhead, and others are coming off the trailer in their entirety and landing on the roadway and impacting our trucks. So we certainly want to do a better job of keeping the freight on the trailer. And so what we're about to show you is kind of the fruits of that journey. So where we want to start is uh, we've got a couple things to show you. One is just our main presentation, all flat betters at Ruan will we'll get this piece. And then we have a, a section called add-ons or modules. And they're account specific. And we'll show you one of those uh, and then a couple other supporting documents near the end. So where we want to start right here is with our, our main presentation. And uh, I hope you all can see the Megasafe logo. That hopefully that's broadcasting right now. And where all of our modules will begin is with an overview. We just want to show the drivers what's going to be covered in this specific training. And where our, our main flatbed piece always begins is, is why. 
why why are we doing this? Why aren't we just doing it the way we used to? Or, you know, I learned it 20 years ago from Grandpa. What's what's the matter with the way Grandpa taught me? And so what we want to do is take a moment to talk about the dangers of trucking, talk about the dangers in, in flatbedding, because there are inherent risks. And there's a video embedded into this presentation, and it plays much better on the outside. Sometimes with this AT&T webinar, it, it gets a little stuck. So we'll see if it plays. And it looks like it's going to play on my computer. I hope you can all see it. But what you see is a driver on the back of a flatbed. And if you look in the lower left-hand corner of his flatbed, he has currently dunnage tied down, looks like with a strap. And he's up there working just behind the bulkhead. And down he goes. And in a second, he'll get up and he'll wander off screen. And you can tell by his limp, he's hurt. He's hurt bad. Now, we freeze the video there and use it as a talking point with our drivers. But if the video is allowed to play out in its entirety, he walks back into the camera's view and collapses and is then found by dock workers who summon for emergency responders because he's pretty significantly hurt. So obviously, minimizing the risk and in injuries to our drivers is one of the biggest whys. Certainly, we are a regulated industry. Uh, flat betting has its own section of regulations that we have to follow. And this is the only time that you'll really see us discuss the regulations with our flatbed drivers going forward. Because if they follow everything that we have written out for them in these presentations and through our guidelines and expectations, what you'll find is we exceed almost in every category minimum standards set by the regs. And it probably cannot be stressed enough to everybody that when it comes to trucking and at all at Ruan, we preach the captain of the ship and certainly in flatbedding. If, if we can't safely and, and legally secure our loads, we've got to stop doing what we're doing. And then obviously there, there is an impact to the motoring public. The two pictures here are of Ruan Freight that left the trailer because they weren't tied down correctly. One, the impact of the car actually did considerable damage to that windshield. So we, we certainly want to protect the motoring public from flying freight. So the next thing we talk about at the beginning of uh, uh, this presentation, and actually all of our presentations, is PPE. Um, and we want to just remind drivers um, of, of the required equipment to keep them safe. Um, this slide you're seeing here is a list of our, our required PPE as of July 1st. When uh, there, are, there are a handful of changes in here to policies, to procedures, to uh, acceptable equipment and, and, and those types of things. And all that really uh, becomes effective July 1st, and we're using that as a rollout to the entire flatbed group at Ruan. But um, for this PPE list, for some terminals, there's going to be no change. Uh, but what we found is that we've been very inconsistent in what PPE we've required <clears throat> from drivers. And so this list is longer or different than what some terminals are used to. Um, in particular, uh, not all terminals require metatarsal protection in their boots now, um, and that's going to be required as of July 1st. And that doesn't mean that we need to go out as a company and buy 700 pairs of boots uh, July 1st, because we have 700, 750 flatbed drivers. What it does mean is that starting July 1st, all of our boots that we buy will have metatarsal protection. So if a guy just got new boots or a driver just got new boots, uh, we're going to let them you know, continue to use those. But as we buy new boots, we're going to buy them meeting our new metatarsal uh, spec. The other item on here that's not uh, probably widely accepted in the flat, uh, our flatbed terminals right now is safety glasses. Uh, we have some customers require them, some customers of our customers require them. Um, as our cross-functional group got to talking, uh, we really thought it was important to require safety glasses uh, anytime a driver is not in the truck because we have had so many incidents and close calls uh, where safety glasses have or would have prevented that injury. So. Um, that's the list that you see the list there of PPE, um, and again, that's, this, this is, we expect to be a, a point of discussion as we start to roll these materials out to our driving fleet. The next thing we shift to, and what, what you'll find is we present all of the information to you 
is we try to design it to follow our driver's work day. So after they, they, they gear up and they start to work in the yard around their truck and trailer, in theory and in practicality, I'm hoping, they'll have on their six items of PPE. Now it's time to do a load assessment. We want yeah, to treat yeah. the load the, to treat the load assessment just as we would uh, any time that we're doing a pre-trip. 364D. They need to look for the items that you see there in the bullets. Look for all kinds of things that might get in the way or hinder their ability to properly secure the load. So before they even start throwing straps or chains or anything else, they need to do a good load assessment and see what they're up against for the day. This is also the first time where we start talking about time on trailer. And what you saw in that beginning video is a driver that was up on the trailer, and it's hard to say if, if anything that he could have been done could have been done from the ground. But what we want to do is recognize that, unfortunately, flatbedding can be a dangerous environment to work in. But what we want to do is make sure that the only time that we get up off the ground is when we absolutely have to. If we're on rolling tarps, then we have to be up on our freight. But if there's an opportunity to work from the ground, we want to do that. And obviously there in the bowl, what we're trying to encourage is never walk where your eyes haven't looked first. And that's especially true if you ever catch a driver walking backwards on top of freight, I'm rolling a tarp. We want to discourage that behavior at all times. Well, the next slide has to do with um, when we secure our straps for transit. So if we have a trailer with, say, 14 straps and we only need 10 for the day, what do you do with those four extras that are still rolled up on the winch? Well, what we want to do is, uh, you can see in the picture on the left side there, start encouraging drivers to keep it on the rail and then as they use their winch bar to tighten down their straps for travel, that they also tighten down the straps that are still rolled up on the winch. What we don't want to have is what's on the right side there where they just kind of roll it up because there is a chance that it could unravel itself and then we have a dangling, dangling strap. So this is the way we want to start encouraging all drivers moving forward to secure the straps that they don't use for securement. The next couple of slides are just talking opportunities with the drivers. As most of us know from our metals accounts, we get a lot of freight that is hidden and very challenging to secure down. You can see in this picture, we've got freight that's almost entombed, almost impossible to get securement on them. This one's a really good picture of a valley as we have different sized I-beams. And you can just imagine a strap coming from the top down to the lower right and all the freight in between that would be missed. This would be a wonderful opportunity to talk about the load assistance blocks or the sponge bobs that we give our drivers, how we have to fill in those valleys. And this uh, last one is just uh, pretty common in the metals field. Uh, we get a lot of freight that gets stacked, kind of like dressed lumber. And so there's an opportunity to recognize when we can layer our freight. And that's uh, this final slide. DOT regulations mandate layering when you are using or the commodity is dressed lumber. It doesn't say anything about metal, but the, the same theory applies. If there's an opportunity to get some securement through the freight and catch the layers underneath, we, we need to be doing that to lock it all into place. We want to start discouraging over-the-top only securement. We've got to get through the freight when there's an opportunity. And our last load assessment slide is most of the equipment that is issued to our drivers. In some fashion, they get a winch bar, the labs, two sets of chains. And uh, in the near future, as we start to cycle out our chains, uh, we're going to try, and the, at least the metals group, get to all five sixteenths. Some of our machinery accounts uh, still have some use for three-eighths. But that's a pretty heavy chain to be throwing over the top of our metals accounts, and uh, we can get by with 5 sixteenths. So you'll start to see the 3 eighths thin from the Ruan inventory. 
And then lastly, uh, the biggest one is the Easy Pro binder, which is a safety overhead binder. And we want to start getting rid of, if there's any old-fashioned snap binders, we want to get those out of our inventories and get them replaced with an Easy Pro or something similar where it has that safety feature built into it. The old-fashioned snap binders are real easy to get away from you if, if you slip. And if you're using a cheater bar to help you release or tighten down that snap binder, then you might send a missile through the warehouse if it gets away from you. So we want to get to the easy pros and the ratchet binders on the Ruan fleet over time when it comes time to cycle equipment out of our inventory. Does that mean i got to get rid of my old snap binders? Yeah. Damn it. Yeah, whoever just asked that question, uh, unfortunately, yes. If you have the old-fashioned snap binder, then we want to get rid of it. Too many injuries have occurred in the industry over a long time. A lot of guys getting broken chins, uh, getting stabbed in the face when the cheater bar comes off. And so we want to minimize that risk. The, the overhead easy binder, the, the safety feature, uh, helps take some of that snap out of the binder so it doesn't get away from you. So now that we've done our load assessment, we're going to start talking about how we're actually going to secure the freight. So the first thing we're going to talk about is our securement guidelines. And what we, we had a decent amount of discussion when we were developing this material surrounding securement guidelines. And what we, what we kind of settled on uh, is we don't want to have to have too much many of the guides. We talked about maybe making like cheat sheets and guides and well, do we issue everybody a slide card or you know how do we do we touch each formulas or how do we do it and what we really wanted to do was make our securement guidelines as simple as we can while still exceeding DOT guidelines. So what we came up with is what you see in the bullet points here. We're essentially we're wanting everybody to use two forms of security on every item on their trailer. So if it's a pallet, for example, throw two straps over it. Don't just throw one strap over it. Um, if it's a, a bundle of tubing um, or a bundle of lumber or whatever we may have, we're, we're asking two, item, two straps in the front or two chains. You can substitute straps and chains while I'm talking here, right? But two straps in front, two in back, and then one every 10 feet, which does exceed DOT regulations, and we understand that. Um, but and then we, talk, we also simplify our securement working load limits. And again, we don't want to teach complicated formulas. We don't want to have to have some sort of long, extensive reference guide. We just want to make the math easy. So essentially, all our, what we're saying is 5,000 pounds for a four-inch strap, 3,000 for a two-inch strap, and then you see your chain working load limits as well, which are essentially the working load limits for those items rounded down to the nearest thousand, or in the case of 5 sixteenths chains, uh, we, you know, we didn't want to lose that much, so we went to 4,500. Um, the goal will be to make, the, again, the math easy. If I've got a 40,000 pound load, I've got four inch straps I'm going to use on it, well, then I need eight straps because they're 5,000 pounds each. Um, the nice thing about this is if we, uh, one, we will always exceed DOT guidelines. And even if we accidentally uh, use a uh, piece of securement that maybe should be placed out of service, for example, we'd still be meeting or exceeding DOT guidelines in the case of an inspection. So um, this is going to, again, this is a change for, for some terminals. Some terminals are, are doing uh, similar things right now. Um, but you know, some terminals are using, for example, DOT plus one or uh, that type of thing. And, and what we're saying is we want to secure 100% of the working load limit with, uh, within these guidelines. So then we move on to straps, and as many of you know, most of our accounts use exclusively straps. There are some accounts that will throw some chains. Uh, so we, we wanted to really spend a good amount of time on straps. And the first thing that we're trying to discourage is attaching to the rub rail. There, there are some drivers out there that believe that going to the outside of the rail creates um, better contact. Uh, it gets the straps tighter. Unfortunately, there, there is no evidence to suggest that any of that is true. The only time that we want to allow our drivers to go to the outside of the rail or to hook to the rail is if there's nothing else they can do. So a piece of freight is in the way and blocking access through the rail, 
so that, that, that's why we didn't completely outlaw it. Very similar to DOT regulations, which uh, repealed that regulation several years back, because there are times that we have to go to the rail or to the outside of the rail, but whenever possible, we want the strap through it and hooked to the frame of the trailer. Some of the other things that we found throughout uh, several inspections as we go in and out of our facilities, a lot of our straps tend to stay in service beyond their service life. So we want to start encouraging drivers to get rid of straps when they're out of service. And that includes when all of the stamping on the strap is faded and you can no longer read it. And if tags or that talk about working low limits have been torn away, or certainly cuts or abrasions. But when a strap looks like it's dead, let's treat it like it's dead, not keep throwing it. Here's a, several good pictures of straps that we found on our freight. Drivers were ready to head out. And you can see the obvious cutting and abrasion cuts in the straps that are clearly make it out of service. Unfortunately, this happens quite a bit uh, in our industry. Drivers just think, yeah, they kind of have the, I can get by with it one extra day. And uh, what we don't want to do, and to, our, to the point Darren was making about 100%, is we go down the road, DOT flags uh, any of these straps out of service, chances are we've fallen beneath the threshold to have adequate securement on the trailer, and, and now the whole load's out of service, pending the arrival of new securement gear. And this last slide just talks about some of the other things that can get our straps put out of service. So we want to make sure that not only is it the obvious, uh, a three-quarter to a one-inch cut in the side, but at any time the cutting in the strap adds up to three-quarters of an inch, then that strap is out of service. So we just want to make sure drivers are one, putting straps that are out of service down, and most importantly, when we get to the section on edge protection, using edge protection to protect the straps and giving us a longer life. This slide's pretty good because it speaks to several different things. And if the video, yeah, they're gonna, hopefully you're all seeing the video play. It's playing on my computer. But you can see the driver tightening the strap. And it must have been defective because it snaps and down he goes. So not only does the video show the importance of using good straps and good equipment, but it also speaks volumes to can anybody think of what trucking company out there would have taught this driver to hang on the bar underneath it to tighten down a strap? Somehow that driver self-taught himself that that's a good technique and he utilized it and unfortunately ended up on his head. So it's a uh, good reminder to use good straps. And look at the faded difference. The piece in his left hand is almost gray and the piece in his right hand is bright yellow. Then we kind of shift into our winch bar do's and don'ts and what we're trying to instruct our drivers is we don't want to see them standing on the bar, hanging underneath it, jumping up and down on it. Uh, there's really no reason to ever have to get a strap that tight. Uh, our body weight is plenty. For most, most drivers, body weight is plenty. And we want to make sure we got a good stance, no different than when you're teaching Little League and uh, you know, shoulder width apart and all, all of those kind of reminders. That way if the strap does break, the driver's braced and prepared for any potential impact. The winch bar don'ts, things that you don't want to do is put the uh, winch bar into the winch the wrong direction because you could break the tip off. Certainly when you start seeing cracks and rust and other things on your winch bar, it's time to just get a new one. Uh, we did have a driver have a winch bar accident at Rouen just several months back in Illinois. Somehow the winch bar got away from him, and it struck him in the face and broke his face. Six bones were shattered in his face from a winch bar accident while he was retightening straps roadside. So we want to make sure that they're following all of our guidelines so they don't get injured. 
And then lastly, we, we, we talk about edge protection. We haul a lot of metal that isn't rounded off. It, it comes to a square edge. Anytime that we have a square edge, then we probably want to put some sort of edge protection underneath that strap. Otherwise, we run the risk of abrasion cuts and, and straps snapping while we're in transit. So we can't use enough. And, and the one thing that we always remember, so it, certainly edge protection does cost money, but if you put a strap out of service, you can always encourage the drivers to cut it into 12-inch sections and use the old pieces of strap as edge protection. They're just as pliable and just as durable as any piece of plastic or any piece of rubber. And it gives you cheap edge protection. That way you don't have to run the risk of it blowing away and you lose two, three dollars every time a driver loses something. So for some of our freight, old straps work very, very well for edge protection. So the next thing we talk about is uh, for straps and chains is, chains is throwing technique. And we have a few bullet points there. I'm not going to read them uh, in this presentation, but we essentially some proper ways to throw, uh, not only with the throwing technique, but also precautions to take before throwing, making sure there's nothing on the other side of the, the trailer, et cetera. And again, this, like most of the other content in, in this presentation, stems from Ruan injuries and Ruan close calls. Um, and then we have a picture there of a, a driver showing uh, proper technique there as well. Um, and and now this is kind of in between, like the edge protection, this is in between straps and chains intentionally, because really it applies to both. Well, once we do talk about throwing, then we move into talking about chains. And just like we did with straps, uh, we talk about the reminders of how many chains we're going to need based on the, the freight weight. We talk about some specific damage to chains and when we, when we shouldn't be using that chain, when that chain should find a dumpster or find a scrap bin at its home and not our loads. And so there's some examples there, and then examples of pictures of chains that have been on our loads uh, that really shouldn't have been securing freight. Uh, that chain was beyond its useful life and should have been disposed of and replaced with a new chain. We have another slide here talking specifically about header chains. And header chains is something that we haven't talked about a lot most places. Uh, but it, it represents a good opportunity for us um, to be able to better protect the freight if we have kind of an, a homogenous load like we do in the picture on the right there to, from telescoping and shifting. Uh, the picture you see on the left, uh, although not a Ruan tractor, hits pretty close to home. That was a truck that was actually delivering to one of our metal customers. Um, or should I say intending to deliver to one of our metals customers um, and wasn't far away when uh, the incident happened. So uh, it's just a really good example for our, our drivers of what can happen. Um, and then another one there you see, um, uh, if you've got homogenous freight um, and kind of a solid, a solid uh, you know, similar load, why a header chain is so important and, and what it can do for it by kind of pinching those edges and, and uh, adding a lot of protection that just going over the top of it's not going to do. So after we talk uh, about uh, chains with our drivers, we want to encourage uh, good binder usage. And whether you're using a ratchet binder, which you can see on the left, or an overhead binder on the right, what we want to make sure our drivers are doing is using chain-to-chain -chain contact. Uh, we, we've found drivers in the past actually hooking the binder to the rub rail or hooking the binder right to the freight. And if, if at all possible, we want to discourage that and make sure a chain is touching the freight and a chain is touching the trailer and then that binder goes in between and then pinches that, that, that chain shut. So working through the driver's day, once they've done their load assessment and then they've now secured their load, uh, now in many cases we're going to throw tarps. And so we have a couple slides here that talk about some specifics for do's and don'ts for tarping. And then we have the next slide actually shows some pictures of proper tarp rolling. And uh, in our talking points, which we'll discuss in a second here, 
the, the, for these rolling slides, we want to talk about how, how we take care of a tarp at the end of our day or whenever we take the tarp off the load is what really sets us up to be safe and successful the following day when, our, when this driver or maybe a different driver uses that tarp. Um, this was a point, uh, when we, especially when we talked to the drivers that were involved with this project, um, this is something that they really felt very strongly about, um, is, is making sure that we included tarping do's and don'ts and tarping procedures and tarping consistency, um, and really a, a frustrating point for a lot of our drivers that were involved. So uh, that's why we talk about that. Now, again, I'm not going to read through the specifics, but we all see them here on the screen. So. Um, and then we got some pictures of some properly tarped loads. And then the next thing we talk about when we talk about tarping is talking about edge protection for tarping um, and tarps. So we talked about edge protection from our, for our securement equipment, uh, but here's a slide that talks specifically about edge protection from tarps uh, when, it, when it's needed and some um, examples of what we can use as edge protection for our tarps to, again, to protect that investment that we make. Uh, we all know that tarps are, are not cheap, so uh, this is a good good point to talk about. Uh, whenever you're going to throw a tarp and the material is not rounded, do we have proper edge protection on the ends? And then certainly we want to be mindful that DOT does regulate, and obviously Ruan is going to promote and encourage and certainly comply with our inner trip inspections. Uh, 50 miles or then they're three hours or 150 miles. So our, our guideline is to follow DOT regulations and then certainly to encourage every time that truck stops, whether it's for fuel or a stop or the driver needs to grab a sandwich and use the restroom, we want them checking their securement. Uh, just the other day, we had a driver who swore up and down that he had just checked the strap about an hour or so before he arrived at the terminal, and one of our DSIs helped him roll back the fast track, and the very last strap holding on the freight was very loosey-goosey. Uh, it had not been checked in a while, or certainly somehow shook itself free in an hour. So those inner trip inspections are critical because the freight will settle, and vibrations are going to move things around, and straps will come undone or loose, so we've got to make sure our drivers are checking them. And then obviously, to demonstrate compliance, we need them logging on PeopleNet that those activities are occurring. So the next thing we talk about is our loading and unloading procedures. Now this is not going to be new for our metals group, uh, but some of the non-metal flatbed terminals it may be. Um, this was a, a standardized procedure that was developed last fall right at the end of the year, actually. Um, and again, this was a metals lab project um, between ops for metals and lab um, to basically develop its eight guidelines. Um, and so we've got four on this first slide, and we've got four then if we go to the next slide, that uh, for the non-driving, okay, now we're at an, a loading or unloading point. What are our do's and don'ts? Um, and so we talk about that. We incorporate that right into this training. Um, for all of the metals, uh, terminals, as I said, we should have been talking about this earlier this year already. We do want to talk about it again as we roll out quarter three, um, and then for some of the non-metal terminals, this may be new. Um, the picture that you see on this slide here, I think, is a great example. This was at one of our metals delivery points um, just recently, last month, and uh, uh, thankfully, uh, you can see the forklift uh, operator there push push the stack of plate off stack of plate off the edge of the trailer. Now, thankfully, our driver was following our guidelines to be on the same side of the trailer as the forklift operator, and our driver was not injured in any way, um, but certainly could have been had he been standing on the wrong side of the trailer. So this is a great example to talk about, uh, an example of when our, our driver did something correct, followed our policy, and as a result was unharmed. After our, our drivers make the last delivery, obviously the last thing that needs to happen is they need to get from the customer back to our yard. So post-delivery activities are, are very critical. Certainly, as, as we all know, 
probably going to be at the end of a long day. Our drivers will be tired. So what we, do, we don't want to have happen is any mishaps while they're just trying to get home. So we want to make sure that their tarps are properly rolled up and stored. To Darren's point, uh, tarping can be a big deal. If, if the tarp isn't put away on a Monday correctly, Tuesday is going to be hell because you know as, as well as we do that if we're pulling out tarps, chances are inclement weather is all around us. So we want to encourage our drivers to put things away correctly, store dunnage the right way, and we really want to see that on the back of our trailers using securement devices to hold it down. We don't want to see anything on our catwalks with bungee cords, and we don't want to see lumber down on the underside of the trailer so we want to make sure that it's secured properly so it can get back to the yard. And that's about where our main piece ends. Uh, the picture is worth a thousand words, and uh, I think that would probably be an eye-opening moment if we ever saw freight, especially the size of a log, coming off in front of us and heading for our windshield. So that is what we call the main presentation for our flatbed activities. All drivers on all flatbed activities will get that component. From there, what we have are, are what we're calling add-ons. And I believe in Darren, Rick, I know Rick's on. I'm not sure if anybody else from the committee's on. But are we up to approximately eight add-ons right now? Yeah, I think we got eight. There, yeah. <clears throat> okay. So the, the add-ons are account-specific. If there's an opportunity, the only one we want to show you today to give you a feel for what the add-ons look like is our coil add-on. And they all follow a similar format. So, yeah, we want to talk through this coil add-on a little bit. And, and really, the point for today is not even to talk through the coil specifically as much as the add-on format. So rather, you're going through a bobcat add-on or a brick add-on or a roll-off add-on or over-dimensional over or um, anything like that. Really, we followed the same format for all of them. And, and uh, like Mitch said, every flatbed driver is going to get that main presentation that we just went through. And then some drivers won't have any of these add-ons. Some drivers are going to have three or four of them. I know when talking to Terry Larman, for example, Menards, uh, most of their locations are going to have three or four of them uh, because they do so, so many specialized different, uh, you know, roll-off and, and heavy haul and things like that. So the um, first thing we talk about we go through is, again, we've got an overview for what we're going to talk about in the add-on. And then we have two uh, slides that are consistent for all of our add-ons. The first one is PPE. And we talk about, this is the exact same PPE slide we looked at about 25 minutes ago. The um, reason we put this in there, and then the next slide as well, is, is reminders of our basic securement guidelines. Um, and the reason we put both the PPE and our securement guidelines uh, reminder slide in all of these add-ons is we know that in some cases, these add-ons are going to be presented 10 minutes after our main presentation. But sometimes it might be months, six or eight months, ten months after uh, the drivers have seen this main flatbed material. Uh, maybe, for example, we have a metals terminal that doesn't haul coils. Well, now, all of a sudden, the customer says, hey, we want you to haul coils, maybe for a backhaul or a new customer or something like that. Uh, so now we're going to train all of our, our drivers on coils. So we're gonna, not going to put them through the main training again, but we are going to pull up this coil add-on, for example. So with these slides are put in there as a, as a good reminder as we're talking through the add-on material, that here's kind of our basics for not only PPE but also our securement guidelines. Then we go through the add-on specific slides. So since we're talking about coils, for example, we talk about positioning first. Um, and you see some specifics there for positioning and where we're going to load the coil in the first place. Then we have a slide in coils that talks about our different scenarios, so or our equipment, I'm sorry, specific equipment. Um, and this is obviously different than uh, equipment just for a standard flatbed load. And so we talk about the differences in the specialized edge protection and beveled lumber and coil racks and, and friction mats and all those items that you see here on the slide. Um, then we talk about securement. We talk about specifically, um, you know, 
where are we going to place our coils? Uh, the guidelines are different for the DOT if they're over 5,000 pounds and, and what that means to us. Um, and then how are we going to load it? So are we going to load it shotgun, suicide, or eye to the sky? Um, and, and some of the specifics then, now we're really getting to the nuts and bolts of coils specifically. Um, and then we have three slides that talk about each of our different ways that we could load a coil and um, specifics that go along with that. With how are we going to secure it? Um, you know, are we going to, where are we going to, not only where are we going to place our securement devices, but how are we going to place our securement devices um, based on the um, individual loading format. Um, and our coils in particular do mirror directly a DOT requirements. This is one of the areas where DOT does a very good job uh, with the regulations. And so in this case, we really don't exceed DOT regs for, for our Ruan guidelines. We just mirror them essentially. Um, so while we have a slide here that shows obviously some so what can happen, uh, what does happen on a daily basis, um, not in Ruan thankfully on a daily basis, but it does happen in our, our world as well. Uh, where we lose coils either into the truck or off the truck onto the roadway if they're not properly secured. Um, and then our final slide here in the coil presentation uh, just talks about the guidelines. So this is a good opportunity, like I said, where we can talk about how we mirror DOT guidelines. Um, the intent, and that's it, that's the last slide of the, the add-on. So our intent is to make it very short, to make it pretty concise, but to make it consistent still where any driver in Ruan, not every flatbed driver is going to haul coils, but any flatbed driver that does haul coils, here's what they're going to go through. Here's what our guidelines are going to be. Um, and then have a, a knowledgeable instructor that's talking through uh, those items. And, and that's the same, like I said, whatever format, whatever add-on you may be using, that's the same format for each of those things. Now, I mentioned the knowledgeable instructor going through the, the coil add-ons uh, and really all of our add-ons, but we know that in some cases this main section of material kind of bouncing back to what we were just going through um, may be uh, taught by somebody that has a great wealth of flatbed experience and it may not. It may be a terminal manager uh, that's not as experienced in the flatbed world or flatbed securement and so because of that, um, Mitch put together a, a excellent talking point document that goes slide by slide and highlights some items. So uh, Mitch will talk through that a little bit now and just kind of show us what that looks like. So yeah, to, to assist a transsoup or a dispatcher or a TM who might be very new to flat bedding, uh, but you have one driver to orientate in six months and everything that we're talking about in this webinar is long gone and forgotten. So as you pull up that main presentation to share with your brand new driver, we put together the talking points just to help re remind people what are we after in each slide. And you'll see a couple of times throughout the talking points an area where the word stress is illustrated. And those are just the what are we really after, the nuts and bolts of that information. So not only does it go through slide by slide, as you can see, I think it's swirling by in front of you right now, just some of the language that we're after and some of the stories. It has examples of when Ruan drivers have been injured to share with the new driver that this is a very interesting field to work in and we want it done safely because the, the risk of injury. So the talking points are out there to assist six months down the road when everything else is long forgotten. The other thing that we put together, and this is only for the main module, is the flatbed check for learning. All of the add-ons are just add-ons, additional information. But we did create a quiz, and it's 20 questions. And just so nobody has to try to remember, and again, in six months, what the answers are, there's an answer key that's been published too. So that's out there and every time a driver goes through orientation or any kind of retrain or any other need for that main component, we want to make sure that they're also getting that quiz and that quiz is being uploaded 
And the last document I'd like to talk to before Darren shares with you our last piece of information is our Ruan Flatbed Observation Forum. And, and this came about working with Brad and Todd at O'Neill. Brad was looking for some sort of document that he could use to record his observations when he went in and did spot inspections on his, with his drivers. From the moment they exit their POV until our truck and trailer are on the road headed down the, to make deliveries, what did we have to measure everything our drivers did? And out of those discussions and and, and, and those, uh, re, you know, beginning documents that we created, we, we've come up with this. And you can see at the very top is just places to put driver information, the type of observation. So even if you've got a brand new driver who's going out with a TSI or a trainer for a week or two, you can check the new hire box or anything else if it's random or annual, the type of product that might be getting hauled, and then certainly under types of hazards in, in the work environment. You have an opportunity to look around that truck and trailer and talk to the driver, see if they recognize that they might be in an area where they could be hurt, and it's a wonderful way to bring up Megasafe 5. And then as you see the observations, it's just a real quick yes or no, you're seeing it or you're not, or it's just not observed. Hopefully they have their PPE on. Then they do do a good Ruan pre-trip and hits all the high notes. And then certainly, once they start securing freight to trailer, basically all of our guidelines are listed out there, things that we're looking for. Are they doing it correctly? And then at the very bottom, any observations, if you took five or six straps out of service because they're, they're all cut up, you can notate that. Then you sign it, the driver signs it, I scan a copy into their training file, give them a copy, and if there's a need for a, a remedial follow-up in 30, 60, 90 days, you have a starting point for discussions. So that will be out there, too. And we certainly want to encourage all safety members and operational members when they do work with a driver that we start recording what we're finding. So the last tool that we uh, – that's a tool, obviously, for the management um, personnel, but the last tool that we created what, that we're going to talk about today is a tool for our drivers themselves. And so what we've created is a what will be a double-sided, full-page, laminated uh, guide uh, that essentially has – on one side it has our loading and unloading guidelines, and this is the same eight points that we talked about in our main presentation. Uh, just a real quick reference, hey, if you're loading or unloading, here's our guidelines. And then on the flip side of that card, it's got some of our general kind of high-level securement guidelines. Um, so this is, uh, I think, 14 bullet points, if I remember correctly. Um, it's just uh, the high level of that main presentation that we just went through. Um, it talks about things like our standard working load limits. It talks about header chains, and it talks about putting uh, – load securement equipment out of service when necessary. Just a real quick reference. Uh, we think these will be really helpful, especially for our newer drivers, but even for seasoned drivers to have in the truck and, and be able to kind of glance at it and have it as a reference. So what we're doing is we're currently getting these printed. They like said there'll be a laminated nice reference card. We're gonna, getting them printed and going to get, uh, get them sent out to all of the terminals with plenty of quantities for each driver and then the terminals to have a few extras. Um, and the goal will be that we'll be able to, each driver in truck will be able to have one of these uh, reference guides in there um, just as a quick, to be able to pull out, like I said, and have a quick reference tool uh, for, hey, how am I going to secure freight on one side? And then once I get there, how am I going to load and unload it the most safe way? And the last thing that we want to show you before we take any questions you might have is where do you find all this stuff? And it is all going to be housed on the safety microsite. So as you can see, I've got the microsite pulled up, the microsite pulled up. And under the training library, you can find all the flatbed materials. Under its own flatbed training tab, whether on the left or in the middle, And there's the main presentation, the talking points, tests and answers, the guidelines. 
And you can see we still have a couple of dead links, Bobcat, Fast Track, and Roll Off. We are finalizing those add-ons right now, and they should be good to go here real soon. And then all of our add-on modules will be up and running. If you're looking for the safety form or the, the uh, rule on flatbed observation form, you go under safety documents, safety forms, and it's our very last one. And that is all that we have. Rick, I, I know you're out there. Is anybody else from the committee on the call right now besides Rick? Drew here at T236. Yes, sir. What, what can we answer for you? Oh, no, I didn't have any questions. I thought you just asked who else was on. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. I, uh, I wanted to give Rick. I know Rick's out there somewhere. Rick, you got anything to add? Uh, no, I think we covered it pretty well. All right, are there any questions that we can answer here in the last seven minutes? Um, all right, uh, guys, this is Rick. Just for those of you that are going to be presenting this information, if you don't feel comfortable with it, please reach out to your DSIs. Um, we are going to try to get to all of the term, all the flatbed terminals to do this training or to at least help better help your TSIs out so they're not left alone on an island. Uh, but please reach out to them and see when you can guys when you, when you can get that uh, scheduled. And just to clarify and reinforce, so the, the, the goal is going to be that uh, starting July 1st, really it could be starting today because all of the materials are live on the wet microsite right now. But starting July 1st, that we're going to start using this material as a part of our orientation for every flatbed driver that comes onto the company, and then also for any flatbed driver as part of their quarter three training. So quarter three obviously will be released um, soon, and Mitch, I, I believe the, the company-wide training is going to be fatigue, you had said. Um, yes. So our, our flatbed drivers will, will receive the fatigue training and then also spend about an hour or so going through this material as well as a, a kind of a refresher training for all uh, 700, 800 uh, flatbed drivers that we have. So, so we well, there are, are there any other questions? All right. Well, thank you very much for joining. I uh, really appreciate it. And uh, if you do have any questions, please reach out to a member of safety or certainly uh, an ops manager, and we can help answer any questions you have because uh, uh, we're, what, three, four days away from going live with all this information and sharing it with our drivers. So thank you, everybody, and have a good day. Thanks, Mitch. Thanks. Thank you.